OK, political commentator Jason Reid joins us this morning to take us through uh, some of those stories. Jason, a very good morning to you. Good morning. Great to see you. Let's start, obviously, with the main story. And the, these are the, the, the so many pictures we're seeing of petrol queues. Uh, I wanted, did you queue up for fuel over the weekend? I didn't, no. Perhaps living in London, I'm lucky enough that I don't have to rely on uh, a car to get around. But I, I do feel for some of the people who have been caught short as a result of this crisis. But that's the worry. Most people haven't been caught short. It's panic buying, isn't it? People who don't actually need the fuel are, are queuing up because they think they need to. That's true. There is a lot of uh, a lot of panic buying going on, which is certainly stoking this. And the problem, I think, um, with an issue like this is that it can so easily get out of control. When you trace it back to its roots, it came, as Grant Shapps wants us certainly to believe, that it happened as a result of that leak from the Road Haulage Association um, but I think it's it's unfair to blame that completely. But there was a clear public interest, wasn't there? If there was some discussion going on about difficulty with getting petrol into petrol stations, there's a clear public interest in letting people know that. If you compare the fuel uh, crisis that we're seeing at the moment to something like the toilet paper shortage last year, there's good reason to believe that it will blow over relatively quickly because with something like toilet paper, you can just keep buying it indefinitely, effectively. You can fill up your whole house with it, whereas... With fuel, there's only so much you can buy. Once you've filled up your car, maybe a few extra containers if you're really keen, and there's not really much more you can do. And so we've seen a lot of the big providers, BP and Shell and so on, uh, describing this as a very short-term increase in consumer demand, which they expect to blow over. And so it might be that the crisis has sorted itself out before the soldiers who have been put on standby have been able to get involved. Mm. So again, though, uh, confusion from the government, <laughs> you know, don't panic. Um, a lot of people panicking and hearing, you know, other stories. So, you know, they don't know what to do. Yeah, you can't blame, perhaps you can blame some people who are going a bit over the top, but you can't blame people for being a bit confused by government messaging. It has been a little bit all over the place. You've got some people blaming Brexit and some other people on the other side of the debate who are perhaps Brexit purists saying that Brexit has plays no role at all in anything that's going on in our politics and the truth probably is somewhere in the middle of those two things. Um, but one thing is for sure that this kind of situation is very far from desirable and a lot of people are suffering as a result of this because people who really do need to fill up their cars are stuck in queues like this one we're seeing now, um, filled up with people who probably didn't need to fill up quite so urgently so yeah we can i think all we can do at this stage is hope that the uh, the bp and shell and so on are right that this is just a very temporary increase in demand that will effectively blow over because there aren't really those fundamental problems with the supply chain that this kind of panic buying would suggest mm. uh, just moving on let's talk about the labor party conference uh, at the weekend jason sir Keir starmer refusing to back angela rayner over her tory scum comments what did you make of that it's quite extraordinary what's going on at Labour conference, but at the same time, it's very, very ordinary and that, um, in keeping with what usually goes on at Labour conference with all these kinds of internal debates. Um, Keir Starmer and Angela Rayner both know that there isn't a general election immediately around the corner. So if there is a time to have internal debates and debates over, you know, changing the rules for electing leaders in the Labour Party and that kind of thing, this is the time to do it. At the same time, this isn't really the kind of headline they wanted. They didn't want people to be talking about Angela Rayner calling Tory scum rather than um, the actual policy platform that Keir Starmer's trying to build. And so it remains to see whether he will be able to um, get over this difficulty he's had with carving out an image for himself and making it clear what he stands for. And it's even, an, even a Keir Starmer optimist, it's hard to argue that writing an 11,000 word essay uh, explaining what his policy position um, supposedly is, is going to persuade many people or win over many hearts and minds. After the weekend, he gave several interviews. That interview to Andrew Marr yesterday didn't answer one question, mm. as far as I, I could see. And he's got a deputy leader who clearly they, don't, they can't stand each other. Yeah, it's a far from ideal situation <laughs> that we're seeing going on in the Labour Party. And... Um, it is, if there's one thing the Labour Party likes more than anything else, it's, it's talking about the Labour Party. We've seen this over and over again. And so I would expect that um, they will come away from this conference thinking uh, about the future and thinking about how they can, how Keir Starmer can pitch himself to the country as a future prime minister rather than just dealing with these internal factional battles 
all the time. But at the moment, it's it's hard for him to look beyond uh, his own party and his own membership because there's so much drama going on, as there always is with Labour. Mm. Well, it's good to see you. Thank you very much. Getting Monday off to... Uh... Well, I was going to say a cheerful start, but it's anything but, isn't it? It, it is a pretty grim Monday morning. So here we are. We're going to try and cheer everyone. We're going to try and cheer. Jason, thank, thank you, you nice very much. <laughs> Sorry. I, oh, poor Jason. I was going off on one. Didn't need to hear that, did he? Sorry, Jason. Yeah. Bless him. Thank you, Jason.